Good morning. It's good to have you with us. For those of you who regularly worship in the Old Parish Church, you'll know that the first Sunday in June is always our Communion Sunday. And so this would have been our Communion Sunday. And while there are ways in which you can celebrate the Sacrament of Communion in this new virtual way, and while we don't know what's going to happen when we go back into the church building and whether we'll be able to celebrate Communion, It doesn't stop us from being the community of faith. It doesn't stop us from being a church family. It doesn't stop us from being God's people. So let's worship him and let's sing together. Holy, holy, holy. you've all had a really good week and I trust that you are all well and have been enjoying not only the lovely weather but have also been able to take advantage of the slight easing of the lockdown and have been acquainted with your respective families and friends. I know we've certainly enjoyed getting to see my parents again after all these weeks and certainly David's enjoyed being able to go and visit his granny and grandpa Um, having the excuse to get out the house and drive somewhere rather than than walk. And even although we've mastered WhatsApp, Zoom, Messenger, Skype, WebEx, Teams or whatever, I think we can all agree that it's not quite the same as seeing folks in the flesh. I say the slight easing of lockdown 
as I think we still have quite a wee bit to go to work through the various phases which the Scottish Government have outlined. And whilst most of the rules make a lot of sense, some of them seem a wee bit odd to comprehend, but I certainly don't envy the decision makers in having to sort out all of this. But we'll run with the rules and we'll abide by them and we'll keep praying for each other and we can all look forward to the big party at some point when it's safe to have one. As a family, we've still been going out for our walks every day, every night, um, and we cover roughly between four and five miles, depending on which way we go. And we all feel better for it, uh, feel fitter than we did at the beginning of lockdown. And we've spent a lot of time relaxing as well and sitting in the garden than what we would normally do. And we've enjoyed the luxury in Scotland of getting the gazebo up and the, the brolly out and making use of the garden furniture and um, being able to have our breakfast and our lunch and our dinner um, outside and it's been lovely. And uh, given that our holiday was cancelled, um, we've had to make the most of it. On a sadder note though, I'm sure like me, you'll have not only been saddened, but absolutely horrified by the situation that's currently going on in the United States at the moment, um, concerning the unfortunate events that have led to the death of George Floyd. It's just awful and so sad that there still exists so much bitterness and inequality and hatred. Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex, is quoted as saying this week that the only wrong thing to say is to say nothing. Nelson Mandela is quoted as saying, no one is born hating another because of the colour of his skin, or of his background, or of his religion. People learn to hate, and if they can learn to hate, then they can be taught to love. And for love becomes more naturally to the human heart than its opposite. David Willis is quoted as saying, God created our skin tones with beautiful variety, but all of our souls are the same colour. And Mother Teresa of Calcutta said, no colour, no religion, no nationality should come between us as we are all children of God. We are all children of God. And the song that springs to mind this week is the children's hymn, Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world, red, brown, yellow, black and white, all are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. And Jesus died for all the children of the world, red, brown, yellow, black and white, all are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Let's pray. Loving God, you are the one true God who is here, there and everywhere, yesterday, today and tomorrow. Gracious God, on this Trinity Sunday, we worship you and we praise you. We thank you and we honour you. We bless you and we salute you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Precious God, help us to glimpse your glory and to make it known through all we say and all we do. Help us to meet with you and to grow closer to you through this time of worship. And we seek your forgiveness, merciful God, for all the times that we have failed you, failed others and failed ourselves. Gracious Lord, we ask these things in the name of Jesus who taught us that when we pray to you, we should say these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning will now be read for us by Ken and Gavina. 
The reading for today is from Psalm 8. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens through the praise of children and infants. You have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them? Human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honour. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swims the paths of the seas. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The second reading this morning is from Matthew 28 at verse 16, the Great Commission. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And now we sing, Loving Creator, grant to your children. I want to tell you a wee story. It's about a pilot in a plane with three passengers. So let's imagine one is a wee boy, the other one is a minister, and the other one is an eminent scientist. Well, as they're up in this plane, the plane starts to develop some engine trouble. And so the pilot rushes back to the rest of the passengers and he says, the plane's going down, the plane's going down, we've only got three parachutes and there's four of them. And so he says, well, I've got a family and they're all waiting for me at home. I've got to live. So he picks up a parachute and he jumps out of the plane. At this point, the scientist jumps to his feet and says, I'm one of the smartest men on this planet. It would be a great tragedy if my life wasn't going to continue. And so with that, he grabs one and exits the plane as well. And so they're left with the minister and the wee boy. And the minister says to the wee boy, look, I've had my life and you're just beginning your life so you can take the last parachute 
And the wee boy says, oh, don't worry about that. We're both going to be all right. And the priest says, how do you know that we're going to be all right? And the wee boy says, you know, the smartest man in the world. He's just jumped out of the plane with my school bag on his back. All that's in there are books and that's not going to save him. But these parachutes will save us. Okay, that's a wee daft story and you've probably heard that story before. But I wonder if there's an important lesson that we can learn from that story. I wonder if metaphorically there are people in the world today who are jumping out of aeroplanes but with school bags full of books instead of parachutes. What I mean is that there are people in the world today who are looking for answers to all of life's ills in academia and they're looking for philosophies and these philosophies are not going to save them. They're school bags, they're not parachutes. So let me ask you if it's not looking in books for the answer to life's issues of today, where do we look? Well, let me tell you, the early church summed up where we should be looking in the doctrine that we know as the Trinity. Yes, folks, this is Trinity Sunday. So maybe where we should be looking today is to the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Now I know as much as everybody else it's hard to get you excited about Christian doctrines, even one as exciting as the Trinity. It sounds as though it's going to be deep and mysterious but bear with me folks. You're not going to find the word Trinity in the Bible. In fact, you won't find the word Trinity in the writings of the early church fathers. You won't find the word Trinity until about the third century after the resurrection of Jesus. And so the concept of the Trinity is a product of the third century church. You're familiar with the basic structure of the Trinity, aren't you? So, in the words of The Sound of Music, let's start at the very beginning, because it's a very good place to start. So let's begin with God as the creator and sustainer of life. God the Father, omnipotent, omnipresent, everlasting. This is the God who spoke and the world was created. This is the God who guides the stars and rules the heaven. This is the God who orders the planet. God, the creator and sustainer of life. I think like a lot of people during this lockdown, I would say we, but it's probably more Tom, has taken up gardening. I'm sure there's lots of you watching this today who have also taken up gardening. Tom's growing vegetables. Although I do think he's got a bit over enthusiastic about the potatoes, we're probably going to have enough to feed the whole church, I think. But all you gardeners know the simple pleasures of watching something grow. God, the creator and sustainer of the universe, nurtures us in exactly the same way. But let me ask you a question. How do you approach a being who is omnipotent, omnipresent, everlasting? Can you get your brain round someone like that? Such a God seems so far away, so not involved in our situation. And that's why God the Father revealed his true nature in Jesus of Nazareth. And so in Jesus we see God the Son cradling young children in his arms and treating everyone with dignity and respect. In Jesus the Son we are exposed to the approachable side of God, the God who laid down his own life in behalf of the people that he had formed. Without Jesus we would never know what God was really like. Jesus taught us about God's love and showed us his grace. I think we've all been shocked at the events in America this past week. We've been appalled at the racism that exists in society. But that strap line of Black Lives Matter remind us of the mission of Jesus to the world, which is surely to tell us that all lives matter. All lives matter to God. And so even in these difficult times, remember, your life, your life matters to God. But of course, there's a third person in the Trinity, just as important as the first two, and that's God, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the presence of God in our daily lives. The Holy Spirit is the inner witness 
to the reality of God. Don't we just need that reassurance for these days in which we're living? Don't we just need that in these uncertain times when we don't know when we'll be together again? We don't know what the new normal is going to look like. It's the Holy Spirit that gives us the peace and the assurance to cope with life's varied demands. We're all worried at this time, but don't let the Holy Spirit slip out of your life because it's the Holy Spirit that gives a lift to our lives and helps us to stand on that higher ground. Without that Spirit, our lives are a bit like a barren desert. So why settle for a bag of school books when you could have a parachute? Indeed, why settle for a parachute when there is a paraclete? A paraclete is a biblical word for the Spirit. So while the parachute is gently going to lower you to the ground, the paraclete will do the opposite. It will lift you up. The paraclete will lift you up to the heavens. And so I hope and I pray that on this Trinity Sunday, we will all allow that same spirit into our lives today. Always be kind. If you see someone falling behind, then walk beside them. If someone is being ignored, then find a way to include them. If someone has been knocked down by life, help to lift them up. Always, always, always remind people of their worth. Be who you needed when you were going through a hard time. Because just one small act could make a great big difference. As I said earlier, we've all been learning new skills around technology and maybe getting to grips with social media too. So in our prayer of intercession this week, I'd like to think about our use of social media and how we react to the posts that we come across, how we respond. I came across a post that was written by the Right Reverend Stephen Croft, the Bishop of Oxford, so I'd like to use that as a, as a prayer, and it's entitled The Beatitudes of Social Media. So our second prayer this morning is a reflective one about being kind and about being prayerful and thoughtful towards others. At the beginning of the Sermon of the Mount, Jesus commends eight beautiful qualities. But what do the Beatitudes mean for social media? and life online. However, even if you don't frequent social media, there are lessons for us all to think about. So let's pray. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Gracious God, I will remember that my identity online comes from being made and loved by you and not from my online profile and the number of likes or thumbs up that I receive. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Gracious God, this world is full of grief and suffering, and I will tread softly and post with gentleness and compassion. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Gracious God, I will not boast or brag online, nor will I put others down. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Gracious God, there are many wrongs to be righted. I will not be afraid to name them and to look for justice in the world. Blessed are the merciful for they will receive mercy. Gracious God, I will not judge others, but be generous online, and I will be conscious of my own failings. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Gracious God, I will be truthful and honest, and I will not pretend to be what I am not. Blessed are the peacemakers, 
for they will be called the children of God. Gracious God, I will seek to reconcile those of different views with imagination and good humour. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Gracious God, I will not add to the store of hate in the world, but I will be courageous in standing up for what is right and true. In the name of Jesus, we ask this. Amen. And on this Trinity Sunday, our final hymn, Glory be to God the Father, glory be to God the Son, glory be to God the Spirit, great, eternal, three in one. Remember to dial in to the Zoom coffee morning about quarter to twelve. And if I don't see you there, have a safe and enjoyable week. Take care. <music>
And remember, you can come and join us for a Zoom coffee morning, quarter to 12 to quarter to one. Just make your own coffee and join us with the number which is at the bottom of your screen. We look forward to seeing you there.